the studio that I'm in now is, um, oh, let's see. Is it the, it's, I think it's the fifth studio that I've had in Manhattan. Uh, the first one was in my apartment. I had a tenement apartment on St. Mark's Place uh, in the East Village. And um, I used one of the rooms to paint in. Actually, I used the living room. It was really a very makeshift studio. And I would move uh, the paintings and all the paint uh, into the back room, which should have been the bedroom, at night. And my girlfriend and I would sleep up front. And then I would put that together as a sofa in the morning, and, and then I would paint. The spaces in, in New York that are the best spaces, they're kind of the ones that are high up. Because when you're on street level in New York, it's kind of oppressive because uh, the city down there is kind of dark and, and overbearing because you have all the weight and the, the density of all the large, tall buildings around you. And once you get up high, you, you can gain access to the light and, and, and also you can get an overview. It's a city that really is very much of a uh, kind of a schematic city that really wants to be looked at in, as an overview. And I like it also because I'm in Midtown and it's kind of more of a business area and really not really very much of an art area. For a little while some artists were moving in this area but now they tend to be moving out and I, I like that in a way because I like the isolation and uh, the feeling of, of being uh, apart from other artists and just thinking on my own amongst people who are doing unrelated things. It gives me more clarity to have that kind of uh, kind of a space, that kind of a situation. This, this picture very well illustrates how I regard uh, abstraction or how I use abstraction as a picture ma making element. I use those forms as um, uh, sort of a kind of a convenience for actually developing a picture. And I think you can see it in this, in this particular painting uh, the pictorial element, the issue of like space being blocked out almost as a kind of a, uh, an artificial kind of perspective, kind of leading the viewer into the deeper spaces of, of the picture. Um, uh, this form being both within the surface matrix uh, of, of the painting and yet at the same time suggesting an element which is foregrounding itself. Yet at the same time it has a kind of transparency to the ground that it's kind of uh, enmeshed in. And uh, it also it, it deals with the issue of, of how I, I deal with elements which on the one hand are subconscious kind of mark making, kind of an automatic kind of drawing, an automatic kind of doodling or scribbling, and kind of render it in a very conscious way. So there's always this interplay between that which is, is unconscious or subconscious and that which was, is definitely conscious. So there's this, this going back and forth between those two sides of our consciousness. My way of working is um, a little, little idiosyncratic for an abstract painter in our age, but it's not so idiosyncratic when you think of the history of art. Uh, namely, I tend to do a lot of sketches and studies prior to doing a painting. And that's because as a painter, I don't think of myself so much as a mark maker, uh, doing uh, an intuitive mark or, or finding his way through mark making in the painting, but rather I'm somebody composing a picture. To me, uh, as a painter, what really counts is the resonance of the picture itself. I'm a picture maker. What I do is, the way I work is I start out by uh, doing uh, sketches on small, uh, uh, blocks of paper, such as the one I have in my hand now, the two I have, and um, once I come up with an image that I think could make an interesting picture, sometimes I'll do a drawing based on it, uh, or, but almost always I'll do uh, a small study based on it, and that'll be like a, a miniature oil painting on paper. And from that, that I use as a model for the larger paintings. These are the sketches from which I'll get ideas for a painting. And these are images that will later on be composed in large scale 
on canvas. The studies give me a chance to work out problems of color and uh, composition until I feel like I've resolved them and then I'm able to paint. Well, the way I paint is I tend to paint in layers and, uh, and I tend to, and, um, and they're discrete elements in the painting. And if, uh, if one element doesn't work, then the, the next one cannot work. And so since you're working in stages, the idea of um, uh, planning your execution is almost necessary. Because you know, I'm not working in an uh, immediate manner of painting. I'm working very much in a uh, um, long-term process of painting. Doing first one stage completely, then doing the next stage after that, and the next stage after that. And um, so it would be act, uh, not just foolhardy, but it would also just be, it would be inconsistent with the nature of the paintings to not prefigure the, the entirety of the painting. So by nature, it becomes necessary to do that in, in this form of preparation. Anyway, to illuminate what I was talking about in regards to the process of doing studies prior to the painting, I can give you uh, some kind of an idea by uh, showing you this painting, which is currently in process, and then showing you actually this particular study, which is pretty much the image that I hope to arrive at. This has been uh, traced out uh, sort of very carefully and very evenly with one sort of fluid and, and even-edged line but it, it'll, it'll, uh, so, but it's, I sort of stopped here because this segment has to happen all at once. Both these forms and then this intersecting kind of loopy form that'll kind of foreground itself there. And uh, this will get filled in. And then the last element to do would be the element with the thick paint. This is very much about picture making. I think of this as being something of a landscape composition or perhaps maybe uh, an interior um, that the, these kind of compartments tend to suggest going into deep space towards an imaginary horizon line. This kind of feels like it maybe is a wall that you're stepping in towards. It's always intended to be a kind of a walk-in kind of space. The viewer is supposed to be invited into the world of the painting. But it's also supposed to parallel how we look at, at the world around us, how we see forms, how we identify things in space, and how we, we begin to shape uh, uh, a gestalt, or the idea of an, an identifiable form. So they're very much about uh, human cognition. And also very much how and why we see a picture. 